How's it going, everyone? Andrew here with Ryan, Fantasy Ryan here. We're here for episode eight, a little impromptu fantasy football podcast show. Uh, we've been meaning to do this for a couple of weeks now. Uh, just kind of life spent a little bit crazy, kind of fell behind. But we're going to try, try it um, week four here. Um, we're going to kind of break down a little bit of our fantasy football draft we had in our uh, league for money. And, yeah. uh, and then kind of go over where we're currently at in the standings in our league. And then probably what you're going to be more invested in is we'll kind of do a little bit of a breakdown of this week's games, uh, give our thoughts, as well as some potential breakout candidates and some sleeper candidates uh, potentially for each game. So how's it going, Ryan? Doing pretty good, Andrew. How you doing? We're surviving. We are yeah. surviving. Yeah. One other thing that we might want to touch on is the definite postponement of the Titans Steelers game this week. Yeah, a lot of breaking news here. Uh, implications that might have on your fantasy team this week. So, what can you tell me about it? Have you uh, looked I into it? I haven't looked up too much on it. All I know is they made an announcement that it's definitely postponed and they're not playing Sunday this week. And they're okay. hoping to play Monday or Tuesday. The hope is Monday because if they play Monday, It'd be just like a Monday night game, essentially, and hopefully your players – I'm not sure. Like, it's kind of up in the air right now. Right now, ESPN just kind of has a blank spot on all of the Titans and Steelers players, like, and it just says postponed for the game. So there's mm-hmm. no – because they don't know what's going on yet, really. So if it's a Tuesday game, that's going to make it really interesting because how do you count yeah. in points on a Tuesday when really the waiver wire has opened up and a lot of, a lot of people, for example, in our league – you you uh you have Tuesday to get your waivers in, and then after Tuesday night into Wednesday morning is when the waivers go through and you know players are picked up through free agents. That's a great point. Uh, do you think they would potentially just kind of push it back to like uh like Wednesday deadline and then Thursday would be like when waivers cleared? I mean that would make sense because that's uh, originally that's how our league was, and I think that's how ESPN standard league is. I'm not sure how. <laughs> Might have to start over. All right. All right. Um, so, right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how um, I'm pretty sure that ESPN standard is normally like that. So um, I'm not sure what adjustments uh, could be made there or even if you could do it on a league basis. So maybe we push ours back to a Thursday and then um, waivers for the week. I'm not sure if you can edit it during the year or not. I've never tried. So. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Um did they didn't release any names of any of the players who tested, did they? Um, I read an article briefly early and it had a few on there. I think it was two of the it was two offensive linemen, I believe, on the Titans and then a backup tight end. Um Okay. It wasn't any big names that I saw. Um, but I know that there was like five staff members too or something. Yeah. That, that hey. Was- so. It could potentially have some fancy Im- implications going forward, especially just being like the off game and stuff too, like not playing on a different different day, being out, out of the flow of their regular um, game prep and stuff. It just could be, right. it'll be something to monitor in the in the coming days. Uh, who are they playing again? Uh, the Titans and the Steelers. Steelers. Yep. So both both teams are three and zero as well right now. So it's a pretty pivotal game. Correct. Correct. Um, and then I know that uh, also there was talk, obviously, Minnesota, who played the Titans this past weekend, um, didn't hold practices or anything this week. So I'm not sure what's going on with them. So far, they're still planning on playing. I don't think they have any positive tests yet, mm-hmm. which would be why they would still be in the clear at this point, I'm guessing. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, definitely something to monitor in the, in the coming days. So... For a reminder, we will kind of, I will give you a little bit of a breakdown of our fantasy football league, the one, the personal one that we are in. Um, I know everyone's kind of probably, if you're watching this, you're you're in your own, and that's obviously the most important league for you. Uh, it's always I always enjoy kind of looking at other leagues' draft trends and kind of see how how they go. I, our, our league is always good for some uh, for some surprises every single yeah, year. Every can, year. You can prep for days and hours and weeks, and then 
Uh, you might as well just throw your throw your draft guy or draft strategy right out the window. Come like round three because someone was taken that you never even saw yeah. coming. So I'm getting a uh, my dog here. So I'm gonna take him downstairs real quick, and then I'll right. be right back. All right. All right, through the through the joy of editing, you guys didn't even realize we were gone, but we took a quick break here, and now we're back. <laughs> yeah. uh, we we will. Uh, I will give you a quick breakdown of our league that we are in. Uh, we are in. This is year eleven of our uh, fantasy football league. Uh, it's evolved over the years. It's currently a twelve-team full PPR league, um, with both me and Ryan kind of dominating the last five or six years of it. Um, and uh, it's tech t typically a league that goes very running back heavy, as most fantasy football leagues do. You will see some running backs going really early in this draft. Um, but we're excited to just kind of break down and we'll kind of talk about the experience of draft night. Um, we were on a Zoom call, all of us together, as we were kind of doing it. So it was really fun to kind of get together and have like an improv to like almost in-person draft live draft so it was fun to do that i'm sure we'll probably do that going forward yeah it was very fun. Fun. so yep so yeah we'll kind of just get right into it here and uh we'll just kind of share the screen on um on the uh on the draft results so here we are so ryan you had your team name is the red solo cup yes i am mr prolific you drafted out of the ninth slot this year um and i drafted I drew number 11. So the way we did draft order this year is we, we all picked a character um, from the newest Super Smash Brothers, and we did a computer-generated sim battle, and our our guys did not do so hot. So yeah. picking towards the end, I usually do pretty good. I've had, I've had some success picking out of the 11th slot before. I've actually won a championship, I think, picking out of the 11th slot. Yes, so yes you I'm, did. I, am, I believe it was us in the finals. Yep. I am comfortable picking out of, of the 11th spot. However, as you can see, uh, as of week four, I'm kind of regretting my pick at 11. Um, I took Joe Mixon. Ryan, you went with Josh Jacobs. As you can see, it was extremely running back heavy. Michael Thomas being the only receiver taken in the first. Nope, oh, there's two receivers, Michael Thomas at seven and Devontae Adams at 10. And then there's huge surprise, Pat Mahomes. At 12. So we are in a one QB league. Uh, it's a pretty standard one. There's no super flex, just one regular flex. So seeing Pat Mahomes go 12 is surprising. Um, thoughts on the first round at all, Ryan? Um, I wasn't very surprised, obviously, kind of like we talked about, other than that Mahomes mm -hmm. pick at 12. I was, I wouldn't have expected that. Um, but other than that, it kind of fell the way that I thought it would. I figured Thomas would go around five to eight mm -hmm. and then all the other running backs, obviously very running back heavy through there. Um, Who was your target? Who were you hoping for? At that spot, I was honestly hoping for, uh, Edwards Hilaire or Jacobs. So all right. I got one of my guys because I knew. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was high on Jacobs this year. That offensive line is a little bit better. Um, that it was last year and all the preseason and everything else, they were talking about how they were going to lean a little bit more on Jacobs and use him a little bit more in the passing game. And with it being a PPR league, mm -hmm. that was kind of, you know, he was going to be a feature back and there's not a ton of feature backs out there anymore. And yeah, game. that certainly played into me picking Joe Mixon. He just signed his new deal, yep. uh, getting paid, uh, I was really, I wasn't really concerned about Gio Bernard taking taking any touches away from him. Uh, he is the man in Cleveland. The issue there is just kind of a a uh, less than stellar offensive line and a and a less than stellar offensive system at the moment. Uh, yeah. He's had a really slow start, but um, he was off to the same slow start last year. And really, I think he was running back four the last like eight or nine weeks of the season. So there's still some room for a bounce back here. I was really hoping for. Devante, that was my target. Um, hands down, I really want to just kind of secure that wide receiver slot and kind of go wide receiver running back for the first time in a while. Um, yep. And this and see how it went. So uh, knowing that running backs go so have go so early in our league, I just kind of yep. went to plan B and just gobbled up the two running backs who I felt were, like we're going to get the most carries. Uh, 
regardless of the of the system they're in, uh, which yep. brings it into round two. Uh, another potentially surprise is just seeing George Kittle go at the top of round two. So that was uh, also a very surprising, strange pick. Um, so the team four and out went with no running backs and no receivers to start this draft. They he secured his quarterback and tight end. Uh, got a, arguably the best best in the, in the at the at each position, but uh, a unique strategy yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's a very unique strategy. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't normally go that way, nor would I. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, I mean, especially at eleven and twelve or uh, twelve and thirteen, I should say. It's just it's too early for me. Yeah. Uh, I went with Aaron Jones at two, uh, fantasy's number two running back or run, two or three running back last year. I think he's currently the running back two this year. He's, he's eating again. He's putting up monster stats. Uh, he's technically in what an RB, RBBC. However, it doesn't seem to slow him down or affect him much. He still gets 15 to 20 touches yeah, per game would, and makes the get... most out of it. He's a stud. Um, yeah. I did, I did consider Drake there. Um, and then DeAndre Hopkins also kind of crossed my mind. Uh, I was a little iffy on Hopkins. Um, it seems silly to say this now because he's just a monster and there should should be no concerns about it. But I was a little concerned about him going to a new offense uh, with potentially some more mouths to feed in Arizona and uh, and Kyler Murray just being more of a scrambling quarterback right now. And I, I just thought that Hopkins might struggle a little bit and might not put up, you know, like – top of round two and the round one stats. However, that is the anything from the truth here going into week four. He's he's yeah. getting 15, 20 targets a game and 100 yards, and I think in every every game he's had this year. So uh, probably missed one there. Uh, you went with your second running back with Eckler. How has Eckler been working yeah. out so far? He had a good good week last week. He had a great week last week. Um, he did last week what I expected him to do, especially with, um, well, I was a little concerned just because obviously his pass catching is going to go down. Hmm. Well, that was the concept that he wasn't going to get as many touches from a a catching standpoint out of the backfield um, or receiving standpoint. But I figured with Melvin Gordon being gone, he's going to get some more opportunities running the ball. Um, And now, I mean, obviously last week, if he can, (laughs) if he can keep even somewhat of that pace up from last week throughout the season and stay healthy, Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be very happy with it. I, I actually did have Eckler um, as a, a possibility there um, with my ninth pick. I had him rated at the end of the first round. Um, so when he fell to me, you know, beginning of the second round, uh, I also had Hopkins in mind there. Um, however, everything that you just said, I don't need to repeat it because I had mm-hmm. the same questions going into the new offense. Kyler Murray didn't really know. And now looking back, man, do I kick myself because you could have Jacobs and Hopkins as your – but, I mean, Eckler, just as good, man. He's scoring a ton of points. Yeah, yep, that was a pretty solid solid pick there for you. Uh, it's, there was a lot of running backs here. Like, it's, I know the running backs are, you know, like the Bulls in, in fantasy. I was – I had – there was a lot of question marks on all the running backs here Correct. In, the, in the second round. I wasn't that was super high before, on Drake or before Sanders. Before you kind of – before you keep going here, that was another reason when I saw Eckler still there, I decided mm-hmm. to jump on him because all the question marks for me started mm-hmm. after Eckler, where I knew if I had Jacobs and Eckler, I had two very promising running backs that I felt really strong about. I would be a little remiss if I didn't say at some point I considered Jackson. Uh I would never really take a quarterback this high. However, Lamar Jackson did run for over a thousand yards last year. So you're not only getting like a terrific quarterback, but you're getting a running back uh, at the quarterback position. So he did go in the second round. He didn't make it to the third. Um, However, you can kind of see how the rest of round two played out there. Uh, Still early. And we should see how things go. Uh, I'm happy that no one really got hurt so far. Uh, Barkley and McCaffrey went one, two, and they're, yep. they're the big, big injuries so far. So we'll move on to round three and four here. Um, we're back at the end of round three. Uh, I had Juju Smith Schuster fall to me at the, at pick 11 around three. And, 
Are uh, you Ryan? You went with Todd Gurley. I went with Todd you went Gurley playing to running back. What was your thinking there as when you saw Gurley on the board? So this is also another spot where um, I, I was kind of high on Gurley. And I ended up with Jacobs and Eckler, obviously, in round one and two. And normally I would never, ever, ever, and I haven't until this year, took three running backs and one through three. I mean, not that it's a bad thing, because kind of like we already talked about, running back is very thin now. So it's um, from a running back uh, by committee, obviously, a lot of teams do that. So and when I saw Gurley sitting there, um, I felt strong with him in that. Falcons offense they score a ton of points um there wasn't a lot of competition to my knowledge behind him I know Hill has kind of stepped up here recently um and he's been getting a few more touches and it could happen throughout the year that Mm -hmm. he ends up taking over a little bit more but um I felt strong there in the fact that now I have three strong running backs I'll play them in my flex um if one of them ends up getting hurt I at least have two strong running backs. And then um, as you can see the rest, once the rest of the thing uh, draft plays out, you'll see how I kind of went with uh, quite a few receivers after this to kind of balance that out to yeah. try and get those, you know, that second receiver mm-hmm. playing, you know, so that, that was kind of why I went with that. Um, and I was were, like, I've always liked Todd Gurley. I know. Were you, uh, was there anyone that got taken there in round three that you were kind of, you know, crushing fingers, hoping, hoping kind of fell to you? Um, I was kind of hoping for a Chris Godwin. Uh, I mean, who else do we have up there? I wasn't really high on Beckham. Same thing there. He's one Mm -hmm. in Mayfield Two, He's got a bunch of miles to feed in that offense and Mm -hmm. it still hasn't really took off. Um, I mean, a Thielen, I was actually pretty high on Thielen, too, just out of the fact that Diggs was gone. Mm-hmm. So I thought he was going to get a ton of targets. Um, and also Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson is definitely an underrated receiver. Oh, yeah. For how much he has produced mm-hmm. with Mitchell Trubisky. So especially if Nick Foles takes over, which he uh, just did. <laughs> um, he's, so He's currently uh... – Yeah. Click on those show, show shows game log. Uh, it looks like the the game logs are kind oh, of. Oh, we'll have to do that. Yeah. But, yeah. From the draft. Working the moment, but he's currently uh, set our wide receiver seventeen at the moment. He's got eighteen catches for two hundred thirty yards and a touchdown yep, in the year on thirty one targets. Well, he's averaging over 10, 10 targets a game with yep. about uh, with about six six receptions per game right now. Um, I was kind of hoping for for James Conner. Uh, round three, I wasn't like super, super high on James Conner. Uh, but I just felt like with Big Ben back this year and with a healthy Big Ben, he could maybe return to form and give me a, uh, like a potential top 10 running back there in the round and there in round three. Uh, however, that kind of also led into my playing of taking Juju Smith Schuster, who I did not really think would be there. I thought he would go a little earlier around three. Uh, when Big Ben's on the field, it's been proven over a couple of years that he, he, yeah, he can be a wide receiver one. So I pro- felt pretty fortunate to get a potential wide receiver one in round three. And then I was, uh, I, I, I kind of wanted to get that third running back there in round four, but uh, I had some, some concerns about Bell there with the, the poor offense that he's on. Um, and then Jonathan Taylor being a rookie and splitting time with um, Marlon Mac, however, in hindsight, now that would have been an awesome pick. Uh, but at the time, I wasn't really sold on any other running backs there. So I started looking at the receivers. Um, for whatever reason, I just – I have never given Kelvin Ridley his dues. He is absolutely tearing it up this year. I just – I don't know. It's just one of them things because they got Julio there, and it doesn't think that you should be able to have another top five receiver, top ten receiver with Julio in town. But he seems yeah, to be making a work right now. Uh, he was a he was a home run pick for Team Flint there, but I saw Amari Cooper there and I was like, man, I know he's in that Mike McCarthy system now. He's he's number one receiver there. He's he's gonna be a low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two, like almost every week. I just I couldn't pass up on Cooper, uh, just for the gambles that was uh, like the question marks I had on everyone else looking forward. So uh, I was I was pretty happy. I, 
and you took uh, Cooper Cup, which you can't yeah. go too wrong with Cooper Cup. He's a he's a PPR monster. So Cooper Cup is a PPR monster, and I actually had him rated for my tiers. I had him in around three pick, so right around that two to three range. So when I got him at four, the beginning of four, it was it was a decent value pick mm-hmm. for me there. Um, and obviously at this point, I had already had three running backs. So I knew I had to start stocking up on some receivers and he was definitely the best one on my board at the time. So another one there in round four, which I've never given enough credit where credit's due is Tyler, Tyler Lockett. At the moment, the receivers we took in round four, as good as they've been, have not been as good as Lockett and Ridley. Uh, Did you give either of them any consideration in round four? Because I really didn't either. I I didn't. The only reason I didn't was you've kind of already, I'm going to echo what you said a little mm bit. Um, I've never really really given Kelvin Ridley his due Mm -hmm. other than his, and it it probably comes back to his rookie season. Mm -hmm. When I took him late as a rookie receiver in his rookie year thinking, okay, you know, this man, he's going to turn into, you know, and Mm -hmm. I kind of got burned that whole year because he really didn't do anything. And I think that like, not that it should, but it still sits in the back of my mind a little bit there. Yeah. Um, and with Tyler Lockett, that offense has always been so run heavy. And as they've been saying, they never let Russell cook, man. And now that they're letting him cook. Oof. Yeah. He's producing. Uh, I did have Ridley on my board. I was, I did see him as a breakout candidate this year. Um, I did not have him pegged for around four. So Correct. Yes. Um, if he was sitting there at the end of round five, round six, I would have given him more he- heavy consideration. Agreed. Uh, That's like a reach to me. Yeah, well, I probably won't be sleeping on Ridley going, going in, into next year if he's you know, sitting there, like if I'm picking at the end of round round two, beginning of round three or something like that, I could, I'm could. i probably going to get give him some – if he keeps this, this pace up. Um, yeah, yeah. And honestly, so. man, Julio Jones, Julio's an absolute stud, but you mm-hmm. know, getting up there in age, so it, everyone kind of you know, yeah. they'll, they'll start to see that downturn eventually. And next man up, and clearly, mm-hmm. Ridley is kind of stepping up into that role right now. Yeah, all right. Uh, how do you feel about your team going into the fifth and sixth round here? You, you... I felt I felt pretty good. I mean. Mm-hmm. Like I said, with the fact of going three running back, I felt strong at running back. And, and last year, running back kind of hurt me mm-hmm. a little bit um, because I waited and I was felt like I was kind of trying to shuffle that second mm-hmm. running back and just always trying to find him. So I felt pretty strong there. And I was, I was confident because receiver to me was a lot deeper. It always is. Yeah. Especially in the PR league. But I just felt stronger about the receivers I could get in this area to really mm-hmm. maybe step up into those, you know, wide receiver end of the wide receiver one slash wide receiver twos, mm-hmm. as opposed to what I was going to get for a running back through here. Yeah. Uh, same here. I, as I said, I didn't really foresee Smith Schuster or Cooper being there for me. So yep. um, I felt pretty good about where I was at. Uh, I had some question marks there with Nixon there, but I was happy with everyone else at that point. So um, moving on to rounds five and six here. Uh we are back at the back end here in fifth in the fifth round. You took the Buffalo, the new Buffalo receiver, Stefan Diggs. Yep. And uh, I took a little bit of a curveball here. I took Antonio Gibson, the rookie yep. running back from Washington. Yep. So you Wild. pick up your flex receiver, or no, this is your second receiver. That's my wide receiver too. Yes. Yeah, your yep. wide receiver too, and I and I pick up my flex running back now. So, um, if you look. We're going through round five here. We see the it's a we're picking up the wide receiver twos, running backs twos, and some flexes. We got Keen Allen, uh, the rookie running back Acres went uh, McLaurin. I was a little surprised to see McLaurin go in round five. I thought he could have maybe gone in round four. Uh, Hilton Montgomery for not. I was a little surprised to see for not go in round five, just yep. because there was some question marks there still, but. Um, Jury's still out on that. We shall see. And Darren Waller, we see in uh, that next tier of tight ends go in round five. Um, Which I thought was a little bit early personally, but hey, yeah, you know, we, we tend to get that sometimes in uh, in our draft every once in a while. So what, what also was kind of shocking to me here, which turns out to be working out just fine, which we'll talk about, 
is Captain Comeback ended up going with Tyler Lockett in round four and mm -hmm. then came back around in round five and went with DK Metcalf. Wow. <laughs> He's criticized it, but it's working great for him right now. Working great for him right now. He's got he's got he's got fantasy's number six receiver and fantasy's number two receiver on the same That's team on a on a heavy running team too. Correct. Like holy cow is yeah. like it just goes to show how much Russ is cooking right now. That offense is just unbelievable right mm -hmm. now. Um, so many deep balls. Oh yeah, it, insane. They're just burning guys. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't be happier with the way Steph Diggs is playing. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. I had ranked right there in round five. Uh, yeah, you got, you got you got the fourth receiver right now. So I, I honestly did not see this coming. I didn't expect this type of um, production already. But clearly him and Josh Allen have kind of took off. And Allen's progression, which we can get into later too, mm -hmm. has been very good. Um, I, I, I Obviously, I'm a little biased. I'm a Bills fan. And I wanted to see Steph play well. Um, but – I also don't – I try not to reach, obviously. Yeah, um, as long as yeah. Allen keeps keeps playing at the level he's playing, there's no reason to believe there's that, no that Diggs' his production is going to drop off. Yeah, right. so uh, he's very contingent upon upon uh, Allen keep, to keep doing what he's doing. Yep. Um, so we're there. So uh, my board didn't originally really have Gibson here. A receiver I was really – as I said, I, I, I was really targeting like a Ridley here. I was also targeting a Will Fuller here. He was on the board for me at round five. However, I did feel a little lucky about being able to have both Smith Schuster and Cooper fall to me in round three and four. So I did kind of wanted to secure that, that third running back knowing I had those two receivers. If I didn't, if I would have taken a running back in rounds three or four, I definitely would have taken Will Fuller there in round five. I was really high on him. Uh, he didn't fall to me in round six, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, I took Gibson. I thought he had the most upside. I was looking at all the other running backs that were left on the board, and I felt there was a really big drop off after Gibson. Uh, yep. I knew Gibson was going to have a slow start being being a rookie um, and then also kind of working his way into the offense. However, each week he has gotten more and more carries. I see that going forward. I do anticipate at the moment that he kind of takes over the feature role here by mid season. I mean, you can't imagine that they're going to keep feeding the likes of like a JD McKissick or, uh, um, yeah. Who, yeah, whoever out like it will be the Gibson show. And he is a very prolific pass catcher too. So in a full PPR league, that is, um, something to be desired. I thought that the upside was too much to pass there around five. And I just wanted to secure that, that third running back there. He's, a uh, he is producing low-end flex numbers right now. Um, however, as you can see, he's hovering right around that, like, 15 touches a game there. Um, but yep. his his, uh, his his running yards are taking yeah. off. So if he can get more carries, yep. if, if, if he can, like, double his carries and pretty much double his – his usage, uh, he's gonna he's gonna start start cooking, and hopefully here soon that does happen. Moving on to round six. Yeah. Uh, oh, any comments? Your boy Aaron Jones, free meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving on under round six, I kind of throw a pretty big curveball here to everyone, and I take the third quarterback off the board. And, Kyler Murray. And I went with Kyler Murray while we still had guys like Russ Wilson on the board and Deshaun Watson. Um, my thinking with that is um, I did have Lamar Jackson last year. I took him real late and it worked out. Uh, I just think that a second year in that offense, being more comfortable, having a year of experience at the pro level, and you played really good as a rookie – I only saw him getting better. I saw him as a breakout candidate, even in the sophomore year. He has DeAndre Hopkins. He's got the pass catchers there. Um, and he's got both the legs to, to pick up lots of running yards, as well as the can of the arm to throw it deep. Um, he's played well. Uh, he is currently sitting at number six. He's a, he's a friend. He's borderline top five. Um, he's just getting simply outplayed at the moment by the, like, ungodly stats of like you know the josh allens and the and the uh russell wilson and, and, and the, the even dak Prescott. <laughs> so yeah. yeah um 
I'm happy with it still at the moment. As I said, we're only going into week four. Time will tell. I think that he's got a very low floor. Even when he's got bad games, which he might have some, he he can still pick up uh, running yards. Um, I don't think I don't anticipate him, and him ever really having a big dud of a game where you know he puts up like single digit points or something. Like that. That's what I was gonna say for him, like especially with that pick. I I don't disagree with that pick at all. With everything you just said, and and you can't go wrong because he's got a good arm, and they're gonna give him plenty of opportunities, and he gets in trouble, and he can get it done with his legs, and he can mm-hmm. always get those rushing yards and touchdowns. So you go with VJ Chark Jr., the sophomore wide yes. receiver. I thought he had a good rookie year. Um, He was very good at the beginning of the season last year. Uh, Kind of fell off a little bit at the end, but was still kind of consistent. And right now, um, kind of going back with, I went with the three running backs. So I'm trying to build a little bit of receiver depth here. um, Just to, you know, get get those receivers on my team to fill those spots and fill Mm -hmm. those voids at receiver and in my flex. Um, If, year on bye weeks and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could have went with a Jarvis Landry. Um, I wasn't, I, I didn't mind Brown here, Marquise Brown, but I, I really, I had Chark higher. Um, Landry and I think, Chark. I think, cool. I think, I think Chark's just built to be a more, to withstand a little bit more punishment. Like Marquise Brown's been putting in some work in the off season. He should continue to get better just like Chark should. But if you watch him play, he's a very small guy. I mean. Yep. Yep. Um, and Landry, obviously he's a PPR monster. But same thing, yeah. He's at offense, and they yep. had brought Hooper on and stuff like that. So, so I normally would never take a quarterback in round six. I, I make exceptions when I feel like there's tremendous upside. I saw it with Kamari this year. I also felt like teams were finally getting their their running backs full and their receivers full, and then next thing they were gonna start taking the quarterbacks. Right. And I wasn't. I knew I wasn't. I was gonna go a good like like. 20 some picks before I was back on the board. And if there's a run of like 10 to 12 quarter, and I don't know that you, they say you can wait on quarterback and still be fine. Um, and that's still certainly the case. I could have waited and still been probably fine, but I just wanted to be the guy that started that run on quarterbacks rather than be the guy who, you know, waited there. So um, um, yeah, and we'll see as we get into this round. <laughs> yeah, so round seven, you don't see any quarterbacks go in round six, but yep. then you see them start picking up here in the seventh, uh, the seventh round. So uh, if I had my eyes on any of the big names there, they likely would not have fallen to me there. Uh, you see one, two, three, four, five quarterbacks go in round seven. Almost 50% of the picks are all quarterbacks. You see Russ, you see Brady, you see Watson, Brady and Ryan. So um, I would not have taken a quarterback here with what was left between Breeze, Wentz, and uh, uh, I would have maybe given some consideration to Allen, but I probably wouldn't have taken him in the seventh. Um, uh, You also kind of just see some more. Higby goes. We see some of the other running backs, the the rookie J.K. Dobbins. I was – Hoping J.K. Dobbins fell to me in round seven. That was kind of the guy. I was like, oh, I'll cross my fingers. Like, oh, come on, come on, come on. That yep. would just be too sweet. Uh, however, I, I'm pretty happy with Zach Moss. Uh, I feel like Zach Moss is in the same situation as a J.K. Dobbins. He's just kind of going to split carries with Devin Singletary, and he should be. Uh, they're, they're they're a pretty run heavy team, Buffalo. If, like traditionally, well, if, traditionally. Yeah. If, if anything were to happen to Singletary Moss should, should should eat pretty good, so I thought that he had some good upside there. Couldn't go wrong with with him. And you went with the goat. The you goat. The goat. Um. So I will let everyone in on this. Uh, this is the first time I've ever drafted Tom Brady. Um. <laughs> I I really just wouldn't do it before out of the the spite that he was on New England. Um, in all honest truth, mm-hmm. and it's not the best way to go about playing the game of fantasy football, but I usually would wind up with a quarterback, you know, to my liking or play that uh, streaming option, which is normally mm-hmm. what I do. But here, I couldn't resist the go down in Tampa with all those weapons going into Bruce Arians offense. I just couldn't resist it. Yeah, uh, he, he's got he's got arguably the best weapons around him that he's ever had in his entire Never career. Had. 
Um, absolutely. And you bring in Leonard Fournette to that situation to help mm-hmm. that run game out. And they go running back by committee down there and keep things up. There's yeah, no they got they they got McCoy. You can help out some pass catching. Ronald Jones looked Jones, good. They said, right. and so, Fournette can catch the ball. It's not yeah. that he can't catch the ball. He was just never really utilized as a pass catcher. But he he can catch screens and he can still becomes become a powerful running back on the outside when he catches the screens. Now he's no like Alvin Kamara in the open field, but he will just Uh-oh. pull you over and still fall forward and right. pick up some good yards. So. Uh, how are you feeling about Tom right now? He's currently the 17th I mean, ranked quarterback, but had himself he, a real nice game in week three against yep. Denver. He really, the only letdown would have been week two, because I'll take yeah. 23 Carolina. points out of my quarterback yeah. every week. That's fine. Mm-hmm. The, the letdown was week two against Carolina, where I think he definitely should have played a little bit better, because mm-hmm. I don't think Carolina's defense is that great this year, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he's still getting used to that offense. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think really once he gets into that offense and once they really start unleashing a little bit, uh, he did lose Godwin again. I don't know for how long, which kind of stinks. Um, but, you know, hopefully once all those weapons, maybe by mid season, maybe he'll really be chucking. I honestly, mm-hmm. no joke. I expected him to throw 40 to 50 touchdowns this year. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that was my prediction for him just because, well, he's Don Brady, and he's in that prolific offense. Yeah, um, I think he certainly turned the corner. I mean, as I, it's week four. Uh, really can't it's evaluate early. something like that until probably about the midseason anyway. Yep. Uh, and then, so I think you're probably fine. You just kind of had that one game. And plus, there's quarterbacks just going crazy right now. And I strongly believe in regression to the mean. I, I mean – it can happen technically like Mahomes did it for an entire season and Jackson did it for an entire season. So it can happen, but I don't see Russ, Russ Wilson, you know, dropping like 40 plus point games like right. he's doing every week. Um, as good as Josh Allen's been, I don't see him throwing or scoring five touchdowns every single week. Um, I would love I, if he did, but I do <laughs> think that they turned a corner. I think they <laughs> turned a corner and they've progressed and they should continue to have really good games. Um, and what I mean by that is they probably should – you probably won't see, like, any of those dud single-digit games from them going forward. Right. But I don't see the 40 points anymore. So um, Between 15 and 30. Yeah. That's where they'll be. Yep. Uh, moving on to round eight, uh, I started to go a little crazy here. I I don't yeah. really know what got into me. Uh, I know I was looking at everyone on the board. I did not love anyone on the board here. I, normally round eight is when I would start looking for like my quarterback rounds eight, nine times. Like when I'll get my quarterbacks, I already got my quarterback. Uh, I've loaded up on running backs already. Um, I got four running backs and two receivers. Um, I could have probably taken a, another receiver here. Uh, Edelman was on the board. I had questions about him with Cam though. Uh, Marvin Jones just not, never really appeals to me. AJ Green worries me. Uh, Shepard wouldn't have been a bad pick, but I don't know. I just, I still didn't have a tight end and I saw the allure of maybe some potential upside. Maybe, maybe there's a chance that Gronk can still be Gronk and he's in that Tampa offense and who knows? Um, I, I did, as you'll see later on, I didn't wait too much longer to take my second tight end just in case. Uh, I really wanted to get another decent tight end. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of was like, eh, we'll take a flyer and hope for the best. So, and, Ryan, you you went with Brandon Cooks, the new receiver in Houston. Kind of yep. taking over for uh, Hopkins there. So and that, that was my hope, essentially. Um, I saw him sitting there. I was either going to go with Edelman or him. Mm -hmm. Those were kind of, as everything was kind of falling into place and I was watching things fall, I wanted to go with another receiver here um, just to kind of bolster my depth Mm -hmm. there at receiver um, after I get my quarterback, obviously with Brady in the round before. And he really hasn't done much, but he's been hurt again, which is always a problem with Cooks. And uh, I mean, it was kind of a flyer just to bolster some depth and fill in for, you know, bye weeks. Because uh, mm-hmm. obviously, I'm most weeks I'm starting digs and cup, unless yeah. one of them hurt. Uh, Edelman, I would have preferred Edelman here, honestly, only because he's played all right. He, he's he's hurt already, play. but I I thought yeah he's hurt already too. But um, as you can see that that there was that uh, 
eight reception, 179 yard game there. Yeah. Besides that, he hasn't really done too too much though. But no, I I just saw more upside. I I guess I had a little bit more upside with him. It it was pretty even because you got Watson and you've got Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. I think Watson's a little bit better at quarterback there, but um, you never know with Cam Newton. The dude was an MVP caliber player. What two years ago? Three years ago? Yeah, you couldn't have gone wrong with that. So, um, I saw him. I did consider him. I just decided to get a little crazy and throw a curveball league and yep. Yep. do something very uncharacteristic of me. Usually I, I would shy away from something like that, but um, I decided to go for it, which yep. moves us on to round nine where uh, we start to see some, we're starting to fill up some bench spots. We do see the bill. We, <laughs> we see the first defense go in round nine. Oh, Holy nine. Cow. And, it's, and, it's, and it's the bills. And uh, we, we see Aaron Rodgers come off the board. He, I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping to kind of get him as my second quarterback. Um, you wouldn't however, have. Yeah, however, fell in nine. He's, he's played very well, though. Um, kind of having a little bit of a resurgence there. Um, Believe it or not, but, I was targeting Aaron Rodgers right here myself mm-hmm. um, out of the sheer fact that when COVID case time. Oh, and yeah. I didn't – well, COVID, and I didn't really know what – I was very high on Tom Brady, but it gives me trade bait. Mm-hmm. If they both played well, I could trade one of them and possibly get myself a better receiver to help fill mm-hmm. that void. As you can see, I ended up going with Preston Williams, um, trying to bolster a little bit still there. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I had my eye on him as well just, just for that fact, and mm-hmm. uh, you never know what's going to happen this year. It's kind of a funky year, so – um quarterbacks yeah not a usual thing that's for sure unless you're streaming to the point where you've got like a uh you know a, a for example a josh allen last year and um you know another qb2 like a matt stafford and you're mm-hmm. streaming them and playing the matchup each week which some people do every once in a while and i have done that so yeah actually won a championship with Wordles and Derek carr one year <laughs> so it can be done. It, it can, can be, be done. done. <laughs> you go with Preston Williams here in round nine, though. So so explain your thinking to me on that pick. Um, Upside. Yeah, uh, he showed I, flashes I heard, last year. He showed flashes towards the end of the mm-hmm. year before he got hurt there. Um, he, he definitely has some upside, but it just has been depressing. Yeah. Um, he's not even getting looks. He gets a red yeah, zone yeah. look pretty much. Yeah, he had two targets last week, but he did catch both of them. But only, but he did have, did have a touchdown. If it wasn't for that touchdown, though, he'd have a yeah. abysmal, horrendous sack. So not even dodge, double digit fantasy points in in a PPR league yet. Hopefully, better days ahead. Uh, he is only rostering fifty percent of the leagues at the moment, so we will have to see. Um, potentially, might have wanted to have that one back in the moment, but. We will see. I went with uh, I went. I started trying to scoop up and gobble up some running backs here. I went with Alexander Madison, who could arguably be the most valuable handcuff to any of the running backs in the game. Uh, and he played very well when Cook was out last year, and Cook does have an injury concern, so I just kind of wanted to scoop him up here. He's played okay despite him still being around. I mean, he's getting six, three, and eight, but he's. He's caught the ball a couple games. He's a, we'll, we'll have to he's see. a typical handcuff guy, you know. Yeah. If there's an injury to Cooks, he's gonna freaking go off. But, yeah. If I could, if I could have have this one back, though, I probably would have taken the guy that went right after Alexander Madison because he uh-huh. has played pretty well so far. Robbie Anderson is fantasy's yeah. number eight receiver at the moment. So. Which I did um, not see coming. I just want to make that. No, clear. I thought that DJ Moore would continue to progress and right. play well, and then plus. Um, he does have Teddy Bridgewater as a quarterback. Yeah. Um, and he's doing – so he's producing on limited targets. It's not like he's getting, like, 15, 20 targets a game. He's getting 8, 10, and 6. He's just catching, every, like, everything thrown his way. So, good for him. Yeah, um, I mean, he's definitely played well this year. It's it's yeah. a, it's surprising. It's a surprising pick to me. Yeah. I didn't expect that. So, then we go – move on. moving on to round 10. We see our second defense come off in round 10. Uh, Ryan, what, what's your thoughts on the defense is going this early? Uh, I mean, I just not nah, strategy. I do. I'll, I let usually... everyone know. I'll, I'll let everyone know. I don't pick a defense until the second to last round. And then I, take I, I don't either. 
I mean, we're, we're in a 12 team league and there's always, you know, like what, 24 defenses to choose from each and every week. Uh, I'm, I'm still kind of cool on getting by with, you know, streaming defenses if I absolutely have to. Um, I'm not opposed to taking like an elite defense, but they gotta be sitting there in like rounds like 12 or 13 for me to yeah. really think about it. Like, exactly. be like, holy cow, like Steelers defense is still there in the 13th round. Like, maybe I'll scoop them up before like one round earlier before I'm gonna get like the other defense. So, right. but, but hey, I mean, it's each their own. Some guys fill out their roster differently. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and sometimes it pans out for them, but there's just a, there's too much talent left out there still yeah. for me to be taking a defense right now. I go with, uh, I get my, as I said, I, I didn't wait too much longer to take my second tight end. I take TJ Hawkinson, the, uh, the top 10 pick from last year in a sophomore campaign. I only see nothing but brighter days ahead for Hawkinson. Um, Couldn't agree with you more. You don't take a top 10, you don't, you don't take a tight end in top 10 unless he's going to be a huge part of your offense. So, um, he's played okay. Um, I'm not upset with him. He, he's been my starter over Gronk for the first three weeks. Uh, Gronk's played played pretty well last week. Played 92% of all the snaps, I think, I, I read. So yeah, he perhaps a changing more. here soon. Maybe I might gamble and put, put Gronk in here soon. Um, but can't go wrong with Hawkinson. Um, we shall see. And you went with Marlon Mack, who I think is a very good pick here in the round time before he got, before he got hurt, obviously. But Marlon Mack uh, – I was so happy with that pick. Yeah, he's uh he he was I think he got taken in like round three last year. Uh yep. and I know they got Jonathan Taylor, but they were still very committed to Marlon Mack too. Like yeah, they he were, was gonna get gonna a lot of touches. So Yep. It was gonna be in our uh running back by committee. Um and And that's what you're looking at here were, around time, right. you know. And so they were gonna split carries and he was a talented back and all I was looking at there was depth and mm-hmm. bye week fillers. Yeah, and I could have been happier with could have, could have thrown him on for a flex play if we needed to for bye weeks and do. probably had a pretty yep. decent flex and stuff. And if anything happened to Taylor, then holy cow, you're looking at, you know, um, top 15 running back. So correct. Um, and I'm looking at my running backs being Jacobs, Eckler, Todd Gurley and Marlon Mack. Yeah, not bad. I, I couldn't be much happier with that, you know, not too bad. Uh, looking at the rest of the round, uh, I mean, they're okay. The tight ends are going. We, we, we get the other defense. We get San Francisco's defense going off. Um, yeah. Um, go, moving on to round 11. I wish I would have given this some more consideration because the running back that goes at the top of round 11 has played more than I thought that he was going to play, and he's looked yeah. pretty good. Uh, Josh Kelly. Uh, yeah. There, round eleven. He would have probably been a good pick for me in round nine over Matson at the moment, but we shall see. Kelly, uh, he's he's thirty three. I mean, he's not blown it away, but he's looked, he got twenty three carries in week two, but then he came right back down to earth in round three. Eckler came back over, but but he um, still had five point four yards per carry. Yeah. So I mean, it's honestly. Joshua Kelly was definitely on my radar, especially after I grabbed Eckler for mm-hmm. that reason. I was trying to handcuff, um, but I wasn't going to – I hindsight, I should have took him earlier. Yeah. But I wasn't about to take him, you know, much before round 11, 12, just mm-hmm. because that's where you start kind of filling in with those guys. And when I saw Marlon Mack there, I was much higher on Marlon Mack at that mm-hmm. point than I was on Joshua Kelly. Uh, so yeah, moving on here in this one, you, uh, we see, uh, we see, uh, you, you went with Austin Hooper there, the, the, the shiny new toy up there in Cleveland. Uh, I can't, I can't fault you for that. Uh, paid him a lot of money. They paid him a lot of money to go there in round 11. You're just kind of throwing some darts there and you're hoping to hit a bullseye on one. And yep. that could have been a pretty solid pick considering what was left on the board for you there too. So there really wasn't too much there that the tight ends came off. Um, if Gusecki was still available, would you have gone Gusecki over Hooper? Yes, I yeah. would have. I was he's actually well. Gusecki there, yes. Yep. Yep. Gusecki's played well. He's he's fantasy's number yep. six receiver. Um, how was Hooper played? Oh, not Awful. that great. Awful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's been, um, is, I, is, I had is, is he your starting tight end right now? Uh, no, I ended up actually picking up Janu Smith. Okay, he's played well. Oh, so he's, he's played well, well. but um, he's affected by the game this weekend, yep. possibly. So I may <laughs> start Hooper this weekend. Um, hoping for Aaron Rodgers didn't fall to me. So I take, uh, another quarterback I feel who has good upside, um, just as kind of in a poor offense at the moment. 
um, which in, in Daniel Jones, he's actually no longer on my team. Uh, he is in Dynasty, in my Dynasty League, but not this league. Uh, Daniel Jones, uh, got a lot of talent, uh, played, played well given the circumstances, and he's a sneaky good scrambling quarterback. Um, yeah. I just, I mean, I, I, I took Lamar Jackson here in like rounds 11, 12 last year and, you know, hit a home run. I'm just kind of hoping for the same. If anything else, I was, I'm hoping for like him to play extremely well and maybe use him for some trade bait or an awesome bye week, bye week filler if I need to. Yeah. Um, just hasn't, I mean, I still have, I think he's got tremendous upside, elite upside, just it, he still might be a year or two away. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, moving on to round 12, I took uh, Nikhil Harry. I, I'm, I was high on him as well as a late round sleeper. Uh, I thought he could maybe take over the number one receiver slot there in New England. Um, I know they spread the ball around, but a number one receiver is a number one receiver. And to get one in round 12 uh, is some pretty good depth there, I yep. thought. And you went with perhaps one of the these. Uh, one of the top three biggest handcuffs there in for running backs in Tony Pollard. Yes. Where if Zeke goes down, you got yourself a real nice little shiny running back there to plug in there. So I cannot fault you for that. It was a really nice pick. If I did not have Mattinson, I would have probably really considered Pollard there as well in round 12. So can't fault you there. Uh, Jerry Judy, in hindsight, might have been a pretty good pick now that Cortland Sutton's gone for the year. Yes, yes, Jerry Judy in hindsight definitely would have been a good pick for me there. Um, for sure. I, like you said, I went with Tony. Actually, um, I dropped Tony Pollard last week um, mm. just out of the fact that my running backs are strong enough. Well, not yeah. really. I mean, they are, but they aren't. I'm trying to at that point. I was just I I believe I dropped him for a handcuff of like Booker or something like that. Yeah. Him because it's more valuable. yeah you can do those with the handcuffs i mean it is what it is and if you really needed to you know you always throw some more money on for yep. for my wing stuff uh coming into the the end here we can kind of go through these ones a little bit quicker yep. um perhaps maybe one of the steals of draft in the late late rounds of cd lamb who's played a lot better than i thought he was going to play and getting and him in round 13 is nice i know he's only ranked 27th but you're getting a high-end flex Potentially low end wide receiver two in the round thirteen. That it, and That's it's only great. week four. If he continues to get these like these looks yep. and put up these numbers, I that, didn't. See it. Didn't see not it. bad. Not, not bad. With, not with Gallup and mm-hmm. Cooper. I didn't see it coming. Nope. You go with uh, um, Ryquell Armstead, the Jacksonville running back, who uh, I believe I believe he was he was hurt to start the season off, and he's come back. Uh, yes. Maybe. He was hurt, but there was speculation that he might play, and then he didn't play at all, and he hasn't made an appearance yet. And Allen, mm-hmm. uh, James Allen, or what's his name? Robinson. Rob, yeah, Robinson. He's, he's played tended. well. He's played very well. I uh, clearly he's not on my team anymore either. He's still out. He's yeah. Uh, if he if he if he comes back on the team, maybe he starts eating into it. Robinson's looked pretty good though. That's um, yeah. Not I, that was a flyer at running back thinking because they they had him pegged to be the starter, so that's why I I did it. Yeah, which I'm trying to look through here. I haven't really seen James Robinson come off. He must have been a waiver wire ad. Which yes, was, I believe he was a waiver wire ad after the first week. I believe that's a great that's a great waiver wire ad. So yep. um, moving forward here, we got we got the ageless wonder Larry Fitzgerald going around 13. Man, Larry. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, hasn't really done too much, but you know, we got D Hop in town. He's another year older. Um, I went with Paris Campbell. It was looking like a pretty good pick there until he got hurt. Um yeah. really started to seem like uh Philip Rivers' favorite receiver there. Um in the first few weeks. He uh he he, he played okay. Six targets for seventy one yards and yeah, fourteen and points. And yeah. then they got hurt. So um yeah, nine targets. One. Nine yeah. targets. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, it is what it what it is. Um, and round fourteen, I felt pretty lucky to get Jamal Williams there in yeah. round fourteen, who, you know, right. already have an Aaron Jones round picking 40. up yeah, yep. picking up picking up his his hand his handcuff as well as uh he's a good running back in his own right. So um if anything were to happen to to to, to Jones, um I'd be in good shape yeah. still. And uh, he can still kind of, you know, 
He still throws points down. Yeah, yeah, he'll still throw some points. I mean, he's 47th right now, and, you know, it, it is what it is with him. Um, and then you went with, uh, with with the rookie, Joe Burrow, there, just just trying to see, huh? Just a flyer, um, kind of mm-hmm. like I talked about with yeah. why I was looking at Rodgers up there. Like, obviously, Rodgers would have been much, you know, he, he was much more secure than Burrow, but Burrow was like a sure. flyer as in filling him in on bye week or – yeah. You know, you hit big on them, and then you use one of them as trade bait or, you know, mm-hmm. reserve, especially this year. Yeah. Uh, nothing really else to note going forward here, uh, besides maybe Justin Jefferson, who did, did just have his first big big breakout game. Um, really kind of – he's ranked 21. It kind of skewed the stats, though, because oh, big time. Um, it really That's hasn't done hard. too much then besides then. Um, he just made the most of his targets. Uh, he should become more of a – more of a threat going forward, but I don't expect this, this going forward, but played well. Um, yep. Agreed. Yeah, we shall see. And then round 15, 16, this is basically just the, just the defense and, and kick around. Um, if anyone took a defense early, this is when they might fill it in with, you know, one of their like final slot players. Uh, we don't see that. Oh, I just lost some power here. All right. So. We should probably – oh, there it goes. Just came back on now. 